Okay, let's go ahead and figure out what the square root of negative 9 is equal to. Now, uh, don't use a calculator. I'm just curious uh, what answers, you know, kind of come to mind, all right? So you're obviously looking at this video because you're interested in this, or maybe you uh, say, like, I definitely know the answer. I just want to see if this uh, YouTube math teacher is going to tell me uh, what I think is the answer. But before we get into this, let's just quickly review a square root. So what is the square root of 4? Well, let's just make sure we understand what the square root is asking us. Basically, it's saying, hey, what number times itself gets us back to this number that we're trying to take the square root of, okay? So you're saying, all right, what number times itself gets us back to four? We're like, oh, two. Well, two times two is four, so therefore two, okay, the square root of four is equal to two. And that is correct. However, there is another number. You're like, well, what about negative two? Isn't negative two times a negative two also a positive four? That's true as well. So the square root of 4 is actually both a positive and negative square root of 2, okay? So when you take the square root of a number, like the square root of 4, and you just say 2, that's perfectly fine. That's typical. As students answer this way, this is what we call the principal square root. It's just the positive version. But just so you know, there are actually, the, uh, ha there's two answers here. Okay, the square root of 4 is both positive 2 and negative 2. You can write it this way. So why do I bring that up? Well, if you were saying to yourself, let's go back to our question here. Oh, the square root of negative 9, oh, because there's a negative sign here, the answer must be negative 3 because the, you're probably thinking the square root of 9 is 3. There's a negative n uh, number there, so maybe it's negative 3. Well, unfortunately, if you were thinking that, that is not the case. So don't be too sad about this because you may not have learned this, okay? This is at the Algebra 1 or beyond level, right? So if you haven't learned uh, how to answer a question like this, if this doesn't look familiar to you, well, stick around because I am going to teach this to you super fast, and this would be a nice introduction to a little bit more advanced mathematics or maybe a review of something that's critical. Okay, But I wanted to kind of set this up and make sure you understand that the uh, answer, the square root of negative 9, is not negative 3. It's something else. Okay, so how do we figure this out? I'm going to show you this uh, step by step in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades. And I'm telling you right now, you can be successful in mathematics. Even if you're failing right now, you can be successful in math. But what it requires is great math instruction, okay? And that is clear, understandable, and comprehensive. Of course, you have to have the desire to want to uh, learn mathematics. But uh, if you're at the middle school, high school, or college level, check out my math help program. You can find a link to it in the description of this video. It will make a huge um, impact on your ability to do well in math. Also, if you're preparing for a test with a math section on it, a lot of you don't realize you're going to be taking a test that is going to have a math section on it. Most of you actually are. These are things like the SAT, tests like the SAT, ACT, maybe GED, ASVAB, teacher certification exam. Uh, if you're going into any sort of post-secondary school, you'll have to take some sort of placement test. Anyways, I have a ton of test prep courses that can help you with all these exams. If you homeschool, check out my award-winning middle and high school mathematics courses for homeschoolers. If you need a pair of outstanding math notes, I'm going to leave links to my math notes in the description of this video. And if this video helps you out, consider helping me out by liking and subscribing. But uh, let's go ahead and get into this problem now. So hopefully... I've kind of uh, perked your interest on, all right, well, I know the answer is not uh, negative three, so what is it? Well, let's go ahead and talk about that right now. Okay, so here's the deal. Uh, we're uh, trying to figure out what the square root of negative nine is, and we're looking for the answer, okay? Well, most of you uh, have only learned the real number system. So you're saying, what are you talking about, Mr. Math Teacher? Well, let me uh, explain that right now. All right, so when you're at the elementary level, middle school level, and beginning of like high school math, let's put high school there, like algebra one, you're typically dealing with the real number system. Uh, definitely elementary school, middle school. So the elementary, um, I'm sorry, the real number system is where this number line, where there's zero here, then you have one, two, negative one, negative two, 
and you have all the negative and positive numbers, decimals, fractions, all that good stuff. It's on this number line. This is the real number system, and that's what pretty much all of us have been used to in elementary school, middle school, and even some of high school. So we're looking for the answer, the square root of negative 9. We're looking for it over here on the real number line or the real number system. We're looking for it over here. Guess what? It's not here, okay? You're not going to be able to locate it in the real number system. The answer is here. It's in the complex number system. So don't let this word scare you, complex. You're like, oh my goodness, complex numbers? Uh, this is going to be intimidating? No, this is not that hard, and I'm going to teach this to you. Now, you know, uh, these concepts of complex numbers are typically taught. Uh, sometimes they're kind of introduced to you in um, Algebra 1, your first-year algebra courses, definitely second-year algebra courses or college algebra, algebra 2, things like that. You definitely get into this. And then uh, all math beyond that, you're going to be using this heavily. Okay, so you're, go this, you're definitely going to be seeing this if you haven't already seen it already. Okay, so now let's go ahead and talk about what a complex number is. And it's just a quick, quick, quick introduction to some uh, concepts about complex numbers. But a complex number has the form of a plus bi. So what does that mean? Well, let's write one down. Something like, say, 2 plus 7i would be an example of a complex number. Now, this first part of a complex number is a real number, things that we're already used to, like 2. And then the second part, like this part, this 7i part, is the imaginary component okay so this whole thing it's right here is one complex number two plus seven i and what makes this interesting is this excuse me uh that right there that i everyone's like hmm what's this i and it might be like hmm you know what does that mean well that really is the key to unlocking your understanding of complex numbers so this i component this is an imaginary component of the complex number here it is right here. This is how we define it. The square root of negative 1 is equal to 1i. The square root of negative 1 is equal to 1i. All right, so what does that mean? Well, let's go ahead and use all of this to answer our question. Okay, so here is uh, what we want to do. We want to try to find a square root of negative 1 because we know that's going to be equal to i, okay? I.e., this is a going to help us write a number as a complex number. All right, so let's take a look at our uh, problem, the square root of negative 9. Now, remember, I can write the square root of negative 9, or I can write this negative 9 here, as positive 9 times negative 1. Because I'm thinking I want a negative 1. I'm looking for a negative 1. So let's write negative 9 as positive 9 times negative 1. Now, remember this principle of uh, square roots and radicals that when you have factors like the square root of a times b, you can write that as the square root of a times the square root of b. So we could pull these apart. So now I could write the square root of uh, positive 9 times negative 1 as the square root of 9 times the square root of negative 1. And hopefully you can see where I'm going there because like, hey, uh, here is a, a square root of negative 1 and here is a square root of negative 1. So this square root of negative 1 is the same thing as i. Okay, and then of course the square root of 9 is 3, and we'll just always use the principal square root, although you could use a, a positive and negative. In other words, if you just said the square root of 9 is 3, you would be okay. That's the principal square root. But if you wanted to say the square root of 9 is equal to positive negative 3, that is uh, uh, technically more correct. Okay, if you're not quite sure, you can always feel safe by writing positive and negative. So this is going to be the square root of 9, which is 3, and the square root of negative 1 is i. So our answer is 3i or positive uh, uh, negative uh, 3i. That is the answer to the square root of negative 9. All right, so if you didn't know this because you're like, I haven't learned this yet, well, you're going to be learning it soon. If you were just interested and what the answer is, and you learned something, that's awesome. If you already knew this, I must go ahead and give you a nice little happy face with an A++ and a 130%. As a matter of fact, I'm going to give you many stars so you can have an extra special day. That's very, very good. But, you know, if you've learned this, well, that means that you're um, working with complex numbers. And this is just like the most basic example. Okay, don't, you know, have this expression to be like, this is too complex for me. I'm telling you, everyone can learn this stuff. But it does require work. It does require uh, study. Uh, and the most important thing it requires is great 
math instruction. Hopefully you have an excellent math teacher right now, but if you need great math instruction, you absolutely do. And you like my teaching style, definitely check out my math uh, program for this um, level of mathematics. If you want to know more, more about complex numbers, I would probably suggest um, uh, you can, I introduced this in my algebra course, but if you really want to get into this, check out like my algebra two course, my college algebra course. And if you're really, really advanced, you can get into my pre-calculus course. This is good stuff, super advanced. I love advanced mathematics, but I like the basic stuff as well. Okay. So all these would be good options for you. And, um, I do have additional videos on my YouTube channel about complex and imaginary numbers as well. All right, if this video uh, helps you out in some small way, though, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.